This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are glad you're here. We're going to begin with uh, a couple things to be praying about and introduce our, our speaker for today. So uh, we want to be praying for the Ash family and the passing of Don's mother, Winnie German. Her services are tomorrow in Massillon, Ohio. You're going to miss her big smile and presence when she visited with us. And we're praying blessings on the family. Several others, uh, hopefully you have a, uh, a uh, whatever we call this thing. Newsletter, oh yeah, newsletter that has prayer list and so forth. Uh, several people to keep in mind that have had surgery and, and so forth recently. And I think there's a card request that we sent out for, um, for someone, so keep those in mind. Great to have uh, Sean Judge with us today. And he's going to be sharing lesson with us here in a little bit. But before we get started, let's bow together and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. Continue to bless us with beautiful Sunday mornings where we can assemble here. And we're grateful for that uh, all through these many weeks. Please guide us and bless us in coming weeks. Continue to pr protect your people and keep us safe from the evil one. And Thank you that we can just spend time praising your name and encouraging one another for a few minutes today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, family. Our first song is going to be, You Are the Song That I Sing. I, uh, I apologize, I was unable to get out a list of songs in, in time earlier this, this week. But the first song will be, You Are the Song That I Sing. And the second song that, that we will sing before the Lord's Supper will be the Lord's Supper. You are the words and the music. You are the song that I sing. You are the melody. You are the harmony. Praise to your name I will bring. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the mighty God. You are the King of all kings. So now I give back to you the songs that you gave to me. You are the long that I sing. You are the words and the music. You are the song that I sing. You are the melody. You are the harmony. Praise to your name I will bring. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the mighty God. You are the King of all kings. So now I give back to you the songs that you gave to me. You are the song that I sing. You are the words and the music. You are the song that I sing. You are the melody. You are the harmony. Praise to your name I will bring. You are the Lord of Lords, you are the mighty God, you are the King of all kings. So now I give back to you the songs that you gave to me, you are the song that I sing. Alright. So our song before the Lord's Supper will be the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> Excuse me. When we meet in sweet communion, where the feast divine is spread, hearts are brought in closer union, while partaking of the bread. Precious feast, all else surpassing, wondrous love for you and me. While we feast, Christ gently whispers to this in my memory. God so loved what wondrous measure, loved and gave the best of hell. <clears throat> That matchless treasure, yea, for us his life was given. Precious feast, all else surpassing, wondrous love for you and me. While we feast, Christ gently whispers, this in my memory. I want to share just a couple of scriptures and a little story as we think about the Lord's Supper today. First passage is from Mark chapter 14. Remember the scene when Jesus is in Gethsemane praying the night before he goes to the cross. And one of the things while he, he says while he prays is in verse 36, he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. That word, Abba, in the Abba Father, is an interesting word. An Aramaic word, Hebrew word, that is another way of saying Father, a more intimate way. And so we would think something like Dad, Pop, that kind of thing, the, the way you would refer, not disrespectfully, but sort of affectionately to a father and so uh, when Jesus says that that's that's the thrust he's crying out to his father to his the one he loves and then in uh, the next chapter of Mark chapter 15 verse 34 we remember one of the things that the Lord said from the cross when the sixth hour had come there was darkness over the whole land until the night and at the ninth, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And so that, that cry of Jesus to God, who was his father, is, is Abba. So years ago, um, I was preparing to speak at the Lord's table like I'm speaking today and uh, I'll tell you how long ago it was the girl that's sitting there by my wife uh, was just a toddler so she was two three maybe at the oldest and I had prepared to, to speak and, and actually talk about that passage where Jesus says Abba Father and we're actually uh, getting ready to go up and I sort of left my seat, had been sitting with the family, and left my seat to go up. And I'm standing there, getting my thoughts together. Madeline, little baby Madeline, cries out, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy! You know how kids do. 
when dad goes up front and you know, that's sort of maybe, maybe funny in one sense but that moment it just grabbed my heart because I was about to talk about how Jesus said Abba and how from the cross he cried out my God my God why have you forsaken me and I could barely get the words out that morning at the Lord's Supper as I saw that parallel between my child and Jesus, the Son of God. It uh, hopefully reminds us that what happened uh, wasn't just some religious thing, some historical thing, but this was something that happened between father and son. An incredible sacrifice that was offered. Jesus offering his, his body, his blood, his life, so that we wouldn't have to suffer that penalty, so that we could have our sins forgiven. So in these moments, we remember his body as we take the bread, and we remember his blood as we take the cup. And, and let us think of those things in a deep way this morning. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you that you always hear us. And this morning, we ask you to bless us as we take the bread, as we remember the broken body of our Savior, your Son, Jesus, all that he was willing to do and offer for us. We thank you for this reminder, and we pray in his name. Amen. Let's continue our prayer. Father, again, we call on you and we remember the blood and the power of the blood that was shed for us by Jesus, our Savior. Thank you for this reminder of its power and what it does for us and the fact that it's available to all. Please bless us as we partake the cup. Pray in Jesus' name. also to say a word today about our giving. Although we're sort of doing it in a different way these days, it's easy maybe to forget this part of, of our offering of worship. I'm to share a, a pet peeve of mine. Can I do that? I'll let you share one with me, one of yours. Feel free to anytime. This is one of mine. Thankfully, I've never heard it here, but sometimes um, I've heard people say when they're leading in our services, now separate and apart from the Lord's Supper, before they get to the offering, I've never really understood that saying. I suppose it's something we've heard others say, and so we say it, because as we've just talked about what God has given and what Jesus gave, how can what we're about to give be separate and apart from that. 
What inspires us to give sacrificially more than what God gave and what Jesus gave? And so it's certainly not separate and it's certainly not a part. It's part of the same thing. I don't know where else to learn generosity than from what I see at the cross. I encourage you to think about that. Let's thank God for our blessings. Father, you're so good to us and we want to be good to others and, and to be able to minister and serve others. We want to follow your example. So thank you for the opportunity to give, and not only on Sunday, but as we have opportunity throughout the week. Please bless our offerings and use them to your glory. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Our next song will be I'll Fly Away. If, it's in, if you have your books, it's number 512. Otherwise, it's in the ministry league guide. And the song after that will be Restore My Soul. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, you know I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away, you know I'll I'll fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. <clears throat> you want to sing with us? <laughs> our next song will be Restore My Soul, and this song will lead us into our prayer and then our lesson. <clears throat> and the geese will sing along with us. So, this is your chance to outsing the geese. <laughs> Restore my spirit, Lord, I need restore. My heart is weary, please help me, dear Lord. I stand in need of more strength from your word. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul. Revive the fire, Lord, deep in my soul. Stir my desire to work in your fold. Light in my heart, dear God, your zeal grown cold. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, or oh, restore my soul. Renew my courage, Lord, it needs restored. My cup is empty, refill it, dear Lord. Replace all doubts and fear with faith so bold. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, or oh, restore my soul. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, 
We thank you for this day. This beautiful morning we can be outside and we get together as your congregation, our brothers and sisters. We're thankful for the opportunity to, to be able to sing praises, to pray to you, to hear your word proclaimed, to be able to give back a portion of our earnings. We're thankful that we can surround the table and partake of the bread and the fruit of the vine, representing the sacrifice that Jesus gave for us. We're thankful for the lives that we have here. We pray that we can be a good example and a good influence in our area. We're thankful for we have travelers with us today. We thank you that they arrived here safely. We're thankful, thankful also for the ones who have returned from vacations and have made a safe trip back home. At this time, I'd like to be mindful of uh, the ones who have asked for prayers in our congregation. We like to keep Clarissa Kendall in our prayers, Walt Veneta, Sherry's Bra Sherry Brady's sister, Jenny Paskins. We like to keep Michelle Harrington in our minds. And we have to pray for Dean England. And also we'd like to pray for the family of Winnie, a Winnie Ash German, who many of us have known for a long time. We're thankful for the example that she had in our lives. And we appreciate those like who have gone on before us that have given us those examples. We pray for peace, for their peace and comfort for their family. And now as we enter into the rest of this service, we ask you to, to be with Sean as he speaks, that you would encourage him with his wisdom and knowledge that he can proclaim to us that our souls will be fed today and will be stronger, stronger Christians and a brighter light in our community. Thank you for the love of this congregation. Thank you again for this place, the elders here who oversee it. Give them a measure of wisdom that they can continue to lead us in the way you'd have. Most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus, that you sent here to this earth, that he was willing to live, set an example, and to die to purchase our redemption. May that always be the first thought in our minds. Thank you for your love for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning. I have to say it's a little different uh, circumstances since I was last here. Last time I was here in mid-July, I was up for the walk for water. And Saturday morning, we had a great time out here, went back to the house, was relaxing, getting ready to go out to eat when I got a call that said, you need to come home now. Uh, and so six hours later, I was at the hospital in Nashville. And so since then, my life has changed. It used to be like, hey, Sean, we're so glad to see you. And then it became, hey, Sean, where's Kristen? Then it became, hey, Sean, where's Ollie? And now it's, hey, Sean, where's Michael? Uh, and actually, I don't even think Sean's even in the conversation anymore. So uh, Michael's not able to speak, or you'd probably rather hear him. He's here. Kristen's here. We're glad to be up here with you all this morning. I want to kind of bring the message that I was going to bring back on that mid-July Sunday morning when Mark found out quickly that he was back in the saddle to preach. Thankfully, I gave him a little bit fair warning. He got more warning than I did that I was going to be a dad. We expected Michael to arrive late in July, and uh, he had different plans. So... So if you were able to participate in the walk or you got to hear anything about this year's theme was change or is not was change the cycle. And that morning we kind of talked about what's it mean to change the cycle. So we're going to kind of briefly touch on that. But then we're going to go in. What does it mean to change the cycle in our lives? Change the cycle in our lives. You see, we might only grow up as kids learning about the water cycle. And that's all the things that end in Asian precipitation, condensation, and all that. I'm not a science teacher, so I'm not going to get up here and butcher it. Evaporation. And we think about that cycle and how it just continues to go around. You think about a cycle, a cycle is a continuous thing, right? It just keeps going round and round. But you see, in the world we live in, there are people that have a different kind of water cycle. That's the daily cycle of getting water, water that's not clean. And so their day is get up, get water, use that water, know that water is going to get sick, get back up, 
get the water, though it's going to make us sick, get back up. And so we talk about in our walk for water this year that we want to change that cycle. And the shirt, if you've seen people wearing it, on the back has a different kind of cycle. And that is somebody with lack of clean water is the first emblem. The second emblem is people walking like Lancaster has done for so many years. This past July was the seventh walk for water. Isn't that awesome? And then there's a picture of new, fresh looking water, which represents a well. And then the final is two people dancing and rejoicing. And we think about that. And the thing about the cycle on the back of the shirt that we have is that cycle doesn't keep in a circle. It's broken. But I want to talk to you this morning about the cycle in life. And how fitting, I'm going to use a passage of scripture that comes focused around water. Turn in your Bibles to John chapter 5. John chapter 5 this morning. We're going to see a different kind of cycle for somebody at this water place. John chapter 5. We'll start in verse 2 and we're going to read through verse 9 to get the story for this morning. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has five Ruth colonnades. In these days lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an inv invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me in the, into the pool where the water is stirred up. And while I'm going, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, take your bed, and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. So I want to kind of just focus on a little bit, and we're going to look at some scriptures this morning that kind of tie into how we can change the cycle in our life. But first of all, we don't know much about this guy. 38 years he's been struggling with this illness that's caused him to be able to not move. He's been invalid for 38 years. It doesn't say that it was from birth. So we don't know what the cause of it is, and really that doesn't matter. What we do know is for 38 years, his cycle has been the same thing. Well, at least as he's been at this place, at the pool of Bethesda. Every day he gets up and he hopes that he can get to the pool because in that water, he believes, and those around believe that that water is somehow gonna make them healed. Which is interesting, it says, um, I, I, there's a verse that's actually taken out of here uh, that, that the transcripts, some older versions have it, like the King James have a verse 4. Uh, this, my version, the ESV, does not, and a lot of the newer versions doesn't. It's because it's a transcript variation that they haven't come on. And they talk about an angel of the water stirred up the, the water. And we don't know what the reason behind why they believe in that water would heal them. It did say the first to come. So, you know, they had this, this mindset, if we can get to the water, will be healed. And for this guy, 38 years, he can't get there. He gets up every single day and it's the same thing. I wish somebody would help me get in the water so I can be healed. But here's an interesting thing about this gentleman. We don't know much about him, as I said. Jesus says, do you want to be healed? Now, if you've been in Valor for 38 years and this guy comes to you, you've heard about who can heal people, who claims to be the son of God, and he says, do you want to be healed? What would your first answer be? I imagine but yes, please. Instead, he just goes on to say, well, here's my situation. He really never gives them. And I think that's going to parallel when we get into our lesson here in a second. So I want you to think about that. Do you want to be healed? When we come to know Jesus, Jesus asks us to change our lives, does he not? When we come into a relationship with Christ, he says, do you want to have eternal life? Do you want to have a relationship with me? And we look at this man and we say, well, why didn't he say, yes, I want to change my life. I want to be healed. Instead, he had an answer. And I think a lot of times in our own lives, when we're asked, do we want to change our way of thinking, our way of life? We hesitate, don't we? You see, change is something that is a word 
that we do not like to hear. We love it to hear, oh, so-and-so needs to change their ways. The United States needs to change the way it's doing things. We've had to change because of the pandemic. But as soon as someone says, you need to change, that word becomes bad, doesn't it? Nobody's gonna tell me to change. Nobody's gonna tell me that I need to change my way. It's hard to change, isn't it? We fear change because change is hard. Change means we've gotta do something different and we are people that like to be comfortable, are we not? I am. So if you say, Sean, you're gonna to have to change your daily routine, I'm gonna probably be a little frustrated because I've got a routine and now I've got a totally different routine and now I'm settled into my routine. I know I'm gonna to have to get up at the crack of dawn. I'm gonna to help, to help Kristen with Michael. I'm gonna lose sleep, but it's my, it's my cycle. I know what it is. And so if you said, Sean, no, today you've gotta to do something different, I'm gonna be grumpy. I'm gonna be irritable because I don't like change. And so when Jesus confronts us and we, we meet him, encounter him, and however we encounter him in our lives, he asks us to change our lives. He says, if you do, you can have eternal life. You can have the blessings of having a relationship with me. But then we stop and we think about it and say, wait a minute, I'm comfortable where I'm at. I've got my things. I've got my ways of doing things. I don't necessarily want to change my mindset. I don't necessarily want to do that. Is it really worth eternal life? For this guy who was invalid, was it really worth getting up and walking? Would that change his life so much? It's a question that we often see others and say, why don't you change? But in our own mindsets, change is hard. So let's look at some passages this morning to encourage us about change and how Christ wants us to change our mindset and what it is. You see, Jesus came to change the world. Jesus wanted change in our lives. First passage I want you to flip over to is um, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Sorry, my notes are blowing all around up in here. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It's a short passage, so if you just want to listen along, by the time you get there, I'll probably have read it. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave, my, gave himself for me. So automatically it says right here, it's no longer I, but Christ. Wait a minute, I'm all about I, I'm all about me. I don't know if I really wanna change. Next passage, there's two passages of Romans I want you to flip over to, very close to each other. Romans chapter eight, verses five and six. Romans chapter eight, five and six. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. The results are awesome. Life and peace. Life with Christ. But wait a minute. I've got to change what I like. Tough, isn't it? Romans chapter 12, verse 2, a very familiar passage. Just a couple of pages over. If I can get my Bible to stop blowing. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You see, when we, we encounter that relationship with Christ and we grow in our relationship with Christ and Jesus becomes more of our life, we have to start not thinking about what we want, but what Christ wants. See, our cycle of us changes. And it really steps on our toes. It makes us think differently. And for the most time, when we gather on Sundays and Wednesdays and whenever we're together, and I know during a pandemic we've been separated, but when we gather together, it's easy for us to be renewed and be on fire and to live a cycle that's focused on Christ. But then we get back to our daily routines. And everyday life is the same. You get up and you do the same thing, whether that's go to work, go to school. You come home, you do your chores, you do your homework, you get ready for bed, and then the cycle starts over. And soon, the things you want are what makes you comfortable. And so Christ and what he wants fades away. The last passage of scripture this morning. Turn over to Colossians chapter three. 
We're going to look at the, ten verses, the first ten verses of Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not, not of things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetous, covetous, which is idolatry. On account of these things, the wrath of God is coming. In these two, you once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after, of the, after the image of its creator. Wait a minute. I gotta put aside my comforts? What, the way I do things, and I have to have a new mindset? You see, as early on when people come to know Christ, or they hear about Christ, Immediately they think, wow, I want to have what those people have. They live a different life. I see these people that claim to be followers of Christ and they have a different life. But then I find out, well, I have to give up my comforts. See, we live in a world, isn't it amazing? We want what we want and we also want what others have, but we don't want to give up what we want to get to that point. Oh, you mean I got to work to earn money to get what I want? That's not how it is. I want somebody to give me what I want, and I want to keep what I have. And so when we really are, take an introspection of ourselves, and we ask ourselves, are we willing to truly put aside, to change our cycle, to change our mindset, to focus on Christ? It's tough. But the longer we do it, and the more we do it, we find out there's a reason behind that. See, Christ tells us that not because He wants to be mean or evil, or make our lives hard. He knows what's best for us. He knows that if we change the cycle of ourselves and focus on Him, every day will be a good day. When rough times come, we'll know where we stand. You know, it's interesting that the, uh, the place where that man was gathered, the pool, was in a place called Bethesda. And I just happened to look up the meaning of Bethesda. And it means the house of mercy or maybe the house of grace. Let me ask you this. For some of you, how long have you been sitting by that pool, figuratively, knowing that the water is Jesus and that he can change your life? He is the house of mercy, house of grace. And you thought, I need to change, but I'm not willing to give up. For a lot of us though, we've already known that Christ can give it to us, the things we need. But how often do we say, you know what? I'm gonna go back to my comforts. I'm gonna go back to my comfortable cycle because it's easier. And when it's convenient for me, then I'll focus on Christ. I'm stepping on my own toes today, but I hope it's an encouragement to you that you think about what is your cycle in your relationship with Christ. And hopefully it's a cycle that results in rejoicing because God is blessing you. Christ is showing you and you're shining through to others. We're going to close in prayer this morning and then we'll go on with service. Let's pray. Father, what a blessing it is to be here this morning, to worship outside, not confined by a building, realizing that the church building is not necessarily where worship has to take place, but to realize where wherever we are, we can worship you. And how wonderful it is to gather together with your family, to sing, to encourage one another, to build one another up. Uh, build one another up. So that we go back into our daily cycles of life and that we realize that that cycle is not going to be the most effective unless you're in that cycle. That everything focuses around you. Father, give us the strength to realize, the mindset to realize that when we focus on ourselves, that we need to set our minds back on things above. We know that that's the way we need to be and we know that that's where all the good comes from. But it's so easy to fall into the desires of ourselves. So help us be more like you each day to focus on you, and by doing so, to reflect you wherever we're at and whatever we do. We all love you. We all thank you for the blessing of life here on earth and life eternally. 
It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. last song today will be Faith is the Victory. Faith is the Victory. After we sing this song, we'll be led in the closing prayer. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. On every hand the foe we find, drawn up in dread array. Let tents of ease be left behind, and onward to the fray. Salvation's helmet on each head, with truth all gird about. The earth shall tremble neath our tread and echo with our shout. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe, white raiment shall be given. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in hell. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame, will vanquish all the hosts of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Again. Okay, it's good to see everybody, even way out there. But what a beautiful day and uh, what a great morning to be together. And that's, thank you, Sean, for this talk. That was very appropriate, very helpful and needed. Uh, uh, Todd Sprague was going to have the uh, closing prayer, but Stephanie's dad is very ill, so they're, they had to scoot out, and uh, they were trying to FaceTime, so it does not look good for them, and uh, so keep them in their, in their prayers. But again, we're uh, truly blessed by a great day, and, and let's be dismissed. Father, we come to you, and just so thankful for the beautiful day, and we thank you for the words of comfort. Help us to be more like your son. Help us to have a relationship with him and with you that is more personal and, and that we can call you Father and, and just bring everything uh, to you and, and be comfortable and just approach you all the time. We pray that you'll be with the sprags and the ashes and so many that are struggling with, with uh, loss and with illnesses and we just ask your blessing upon them at this time. Thank you for Sean and his family and, and their uh, being with us today. And, and ask your blessings on all that uh, in your safe travels home. Bless us with a good week. And again, we're so thankful for the, the, the beautiful weather you've blessed us with today. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.